Well, my name's uh, Daryl Caratini. I'm uh, from F1, class of 74. And I talked to you today about my journey with the Lord. So let me start in prayer. Uh, Lord, I ask that you guide and direct me as, as I talk and uh, help me to be able to share my life's journey with you know whoever watches this and that that, uh, that journey would give glory to your name and uh, and help uh, help people that that watch to come to a, a closer relationship with you in Jesus name amen. Jesus name amen thank you for starting us Daryl so tell us a little about yourself okay uh, well I'll start with uh, West Point and uh, something that the people think uh, that I'm maybe not famous for, but known for. And that, that was uh, an incident where uh, uh, where there was PDA involved in a huge slug. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it started out, uh, this is my cow year, uh, my girlfriend, who is now my wife of 47 years, <laughs> dropped me off in front of Sea Wing uh, ramp. Uh, and, you know, I told her about PDA and the military rules and this and that, but she was going to a civilian college. And so she, she of course, uh, everything in the 70s, you know, going on at, at those colleges. Well, as I backed out of the, the car saying goodbye, she leaned over and kissed me. Mm -hmm. Well, something else happened simultaneously. I heard the squeal of brakes oh, no. and a car uh, pulled in right next to us. And in the window, I saw the silver eagle. <laughs> well, uh, I thought, well, I don't think I did much thinking. I took off running. Oh no. <laughs> you seen Bolt, yeah, <laughs> of the 70s. <laughs> so I made it a few steps, you know, and you hear that, hey, you man. <laughs> <laughs> which of course was me and, and then my brain kicked in and I thought if I don't if I don't get away cleanly I'm done you know <laughs> that would be a, a very serious punishment so I came back and I turned around faced the colonel and I, I wound up with a slug of 15 and 20 mm. bringing discredit on the corps of cadets mm. i.e kissing and embracing on sea wing ramp <laughs> Well, the next day I ended up in the tax office. The tax looks at me, he says, Caratini, he says, says, this is a really severe slug for what was done. He said, he said, uh, listen, just tell me that she kissed you and I, I'll uh, cut this thing at least in half, maybe, you know, maybe more. And I looked at him, I said, well, sir, if you do that, when that word gets back to, to the barracks, what am I going to say to the guys? <laughs> and I said, no, I'll walk it off. <laughs> so, uh, you know, depending upon I have two reactions, you know, either I'm a hero for the injustices of, uh, you know, uh, of uh, our student time at West Point, or, or else uh, I'm crazy. And I need a lot of counseling to get through whatever <laughs> issues I have. <laughs> but... Uh, but I, I can say the biggest thing I got out of that is now, you know, after 47 years with my wife, I, I, I can always tell her, you know, honey, that kiss was worth every step. <laughs> That's great. It's a great story. <laughs> so obviously you graduated and uh, I, you went infantry. So uh, what happened after you left the academy? All right. First, I, I just want to let you know, you know, my state of mind on when I left the academy. I, ever since the sixth grade, I, I saw this movie and uh, in the movie, there was this, this engineer went to a remote location and uh, he worked with the, the farmers and the city, which was across the river and they, and he got them to build a bridge and the bridge, when it opened, then everybody, they were able to do commerce and everybody was happy. And for some reason, that just stuck in my mind. I said, I want to be an engineer someday. That's from sixth grade. Wow. Well, uh, at West Point, I took all my electives in, in engineering. But when it came, came time, I, I was not in the top 
half of the class. And when it came time, you know, to select branches, uh, engineers was, was closed, and I, uh, I had gotten some advice, some advice in, in advance that go infantry. It's the biggest branch, the easiest to get out of. Well, uh, when I got, I uh, well, I got married right after graduation, took off. Uh, uh, for infantry school and, and then ended up at uh, Fort Riley, Kansas in the Big Red One. And uh, after two years, I, I, I found uh, one of my uh, in engineering professors, thermodynamics, which uh, I'd spent a lot of time. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, Caratini, you worked hard. He says, I I'll give you a slot here in the, in the engineering brigade. He was a commander. And I, I said, okay, just write the letter. And so we sent it all in, but after board action, it came back that uh, because of the drawdown in Vietnam, that they're critically short infantry officers and uh, no transfer. And the, try again when I'm a lieutenant colonel. <laughs> Whoa! So, <laughs> so anyway, that that was a I, you know, the infantry was okay. I I was enjoying myself. Several of my classmates were, of course, at Fort Riley and uh, and doing well. But uh, I was disappointed, you know, that I wasn't getting the dream for myself. Right. Uh, I end, I, so I, that really contributed to me leaving in 1979 after I did my five years. And I, I ended up at, at uh, working for, as a civil, in civil service uh, at Letterkenny Army Depot as an engineer. Mm. And so I, I'm there, but, in civil service, you don't make that much money back in those days as an engineer. And uh, I know I need another job. So I tried, uh, I, I knew, well, what can you do? I, I can do, you know, military stuff. So I, I, I looked in, in Pennsylvania here, National Guard, they had no uh, openings uh, for engineers or frankly anything, <laughs> basically whatever that. Well, so I, I went, uh, the guys at work said, well, try there's a civil engineering unit in the Air Force and uh, not too far away C-130 unit and they had a civil engineers attached and so long story short I switched uh, services and ended up with uh, working in uh, a National Guard as a civil engineer. Oh, wow. Well so then so I got two parallel careers going here so I'm civil service engineer and uh, military so uh, in, in the end, I, I'll just deal with military first. I ended up commanding that civil engineering unit. And then I, I went on to, uh, to work uh, in, in the, at, with the uh, air staff in the Pentagon. I, I was an individual mobilization augmentee. But when the, the chief of construction for the Air Force left, I was the guy that sat in in his job, so it, it oh, was wow. great. Mm. Retired in two thousand and three as, as a lieutenant colonel, yeah. and uh, then, uh, but in the meantime, my civil service uh, career was going on, and we actually, Kathy and I moved twenty two times. Whoa! <laughs> I, I cannot believe it, to, but we counted it all up, and and we got little maps on the wall showing all the spots we were in at twenty two times. Wow. And it, well, anyway, but uh, I ended, I, I worked, uh, I was, 2003, I was working for the Corps of Engineers alongside in the Mississippi River. Right. The Corps of Engineers made a deal with the Department of State that they would manage the uh, nation building projects because it's, Department of State was, uh, was there right after hostilities. Mm -hmm. And they got over a billion dollars in projects. So I ended up rotating in as uh, chief of party for the engineer, uh, civil engineers in country. Mm. And so managed a uh, billion bucks plus worth of projects from Basra and uh, doing clearing up the channel there in the, in the port, mm. uh, wow. roads, schools, electrical plants, waste treatment plants, uh, and uh, up into Missoula. And, uh, well, anyway, uh, one day I was, I was uh, hosting a countrywide engineering conference. We invited everybody to come in because of the Tikrit Bridge 
was in danger of failing, mm. which was one of our projects that we were, uh, you know, trying trying to finish up, but we couldn't didn't want to stop the commerce. And I'm standing underneath that Tikrit bridge, and I look up there, and uh, this is my dream, you know, to keep uh, commerce flowing over a river. Right. For yeah. a, you know, I said, my word, you know. So so anyway, uh, I, I finished out my civil service uh, in, at Fort Belvoir, and I, I was director for facilities engineering for uh, the in, not. Uh, Industrial Operations Command, okay. which they changed names several times, but sure. uh, yeah. Four Star Command. So, so that was in 2009 that uh, I retired from them. So Daryl, you, you, you really had a successful career as an engineer, as you desired. Somewhere in that time frame, you wrote, you wrote an article about a neighborhood Bible study you attended. Where was that and what, what was that story? That's actually the most important story in my life. And I, I, I want to start out just saying, where was I spiritually? Sure. At, what, at West Point, uh, somehow, I, I came to the point where I didn't believe in God. Hmm. And I thought, I mean, I go through the motions, I go to chapel and that, but it, I thought that uh, Jesus was just a good man, has very good things to say, but uh, and I threw myself into, you know, like military life. Uh, three days, I, I said, three days after I, I uh, graduated, I got married. And then, you know, we, we ended up at Fort Riley, Kansas. And uh, within four years, we had two toddlers. I was doing really well in, in the infantry. And I... Uh, you know, despite me, you know, I was disappointed I couldn't go over to engineers, but I was doing real well. And, they, you know, I had a lot of friends on, on the base. I, I was so happy that in my, uh, uh, one of the reports my commander did, he said, this is a man's man. And, you know, I, I just I thought, wow, that's just awesome. You know, but what it meant was that I could drink, I could curse with the rest of them everybody you know i mean i was just man's man right and and so uh but here i was you know doing the military work and uh work you know, of course working the long hours and a lot of time in the field deployments and uh i, I was thinking well here i am married I, i'm got got a good job and all that and i, I is this all there is Mm. And, and the toddlers were beginning to speak. <laughs> and my wife and I, one day, we were just having, a, after supper, just having a talk. Oh, what are we going to tell these kids about God? I mean, don't believe in God. So, mm. you know, I don't want to lie to them. Yeah. And uh, my wife says, well, if somebody comes by uh, or not, somebody, she said, well, well, we came to a decision and neither of us knew the Bible. And if an opportunity happened, to to read the bible uh in order to do some more study we should do it well it wasn't two weeks after that she some women came by in the neighborhood invited her to a, a neighborhood bible study and uh and they said beside that we we'll give you free babysitting <laughs> she was in <laughs> yeah there you go uh, well she would come home from that and you know i'd come home late you know in the evening and she'd say you know i went to that bible study today and they're talking about this what do you think and i i, I had no answers for her and I, you know and we we talked some more and well i guess out of that there there happened and found out about a a uh, couple study she invited so we got invited to that and uh so i was thinking i can go to any bible study you know and and uh i mean i'm ashamed to admit it now but in the uh, in the battalion area, I used to ridicule. If I knew you're a Christian, I would ridicule you. Sure. I'd ask you, you know, questions about life and death and Jesus, and laugh at you. And uh, you know, so so anyway. Uh, but she said, "Look, who's the who's the, the Bible? He he's a soldier." And I I look, I looked at the leader. He was a helicopter pilot, and I. Uh, hmm. Everybody knew him. This guy had been to Vietnam, and uh, he he went in where people wouldn't go. 
to pull out soldiers. He got shot down wow. and he, he was and he flew again. I said, this guy's a Christian. <laughs> Yeah, believe it, right? I said, well, yeah, <laughs> I wanted to, so I, I really wanted to know him, you know, sure, so, sure. I, so I went to the study. I, uh, the first night, as he, well, as it would, ha you know, would have it, uh, so, so they, uh, I, I had guard duty, a full day at work, and then I was running late, picking up my wife, so we, so we, we get to the study, you know, and they had waited for us. And, and so we couldn't sit together. So I'm always across the room. I'm there and, and the leader looks around. He says, all right, let's bow our heads to pray. I bowed down. I never came up. Oh, wow. <laughs> I fell asleep. Uh -huh. Nobody woke me up. Oh. <laughs> and my wife was too far away to kick me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think how disrespectful that was, but yeah, but, but anyway, that was just the first night. That was just yeah, the, first night. It was the guy who was trying to press. <laughs> so uh, the second time around, the Bible study leader says, uh, well, look, why don't we just start out by reading the scripture? And we're reading in Colossians. I don't know exactly what we were reading. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes, they started to read and something was going on inside me. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I started to read, I could, I could just feel it inside me. Mm. It wasn't what I it said. This is the truth. Mm. This is the truth. It was like a trip hammer in there. I thought, where's this noise coming from? I looked around the room and it kept up as the people kept reading. Wow. And I said, I told my wife, I said, Kathy, I, you know, I didn't know what to make of it. Yeah. And I said, to, you know, we got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked to this helicopter pilot and I said, I, I need to know more. And I uh, said, well, come over to our house. They, they had us over to their house and I, uh, and in it, he just walked us through it, what scripture has to say. And he explained to me that like in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned, right. I'm short of the glory of God. Well, I, I knew I was a sinner. I, I couldn't hide from that. And Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I, I was saying a gift, and it, you know, it's a free gift. And I, and I asked him, and, and he says, well, look at this, this, this verse, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith. It's the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. I, this is a gift. And he says, look here at Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I said, this is too simple. <laughs> I, I have to, don't I have to work for it? You know, I, I, you know, how good do I have to be? And he, he just explained me that's, that's the whole point that Christ did this for you. And it was just like, I, well, I didn't pray then. And of course, my wife was right there taking it all in. Yeah. We drove down the, we're driving down the highway, coming back to our house. And she, she looked at me and I looked at her. The kids are asleep in the back. We just pulled off the side of the road and prayed that God would come into our lives. What a change. <laughs> yes. It was just over. I can't say it changed my whole life. Right. And I, now I had a mission. Right. <laughs> yes. I had God, and well, I knew I had to, to do something right. more. You know, I didn't know. You know, I, I went back to that motor pool the next day, and we're breaking track. And guess who used foul language on that track? You know, <laughs> sure. without that help. <laughs> right. yeah. In my mind, but I didn't know any better. Right. And I, I was deployed. The Bible study leader gave me a Bible and I was deployed to Wisconsin out in the woods, Fort McCoy. And I'm sitting there in a the barracks, nobody around that, you know, that to help me on this journey, I didn't know how to approach other Christians or, or whatever. And I, I said, God, you know, you're just going to have to show me, show me what this is all about or lead me, you know? And uh, <laughs> he has. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. And, and or put people on my path to guide and direct me on this journey. Amen. So you've you've now been a Christian from that time, roughly 35, 40 years. That's yeah. a lot of time, Daryl. Can you kind of give us a quick summary of the dramatic changes that have occurred? Well, you know, it, it occurs as as you get knowledge or God reveals himself to you, like that cursing. I, I was I was okay with it till I got to I want to say James chapter uh, chapter three three ten I think it is. All right. You know, how can the same mouth that praises God also yeah. curse? Yeah. And I thought about that. Well, how can it? <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm at church, praise you, Lord, and then the motor yeah. pool. You know? And then then the all the yeah. And, and I understand. So that, well, how is that gonna? Yeah. Oh, you hear my son talk to. Talk about it. He said, Dad, I, I sliced my finger really bad one time uh, on, on glass, and I'm going, oh, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was hard because it, it becomes a, you know, but you know, you need to get rid of it. Right. To, it doesn't please God to hear that. Yeah. Well, anyway, but, but in the rest of my life, you know, that just, I, I did all the, I just threw myself into it, actually. We, we did, we had kids. So we, my wife and I became youth group leaders. I was a, I became a, a, a deacon, Sunday school superintendent, then a, an elder in the church, and uh, progressed even where I, I've given uh, three men's retreats. Wow, neat. And uh, well, it, it was. It was quite a ride, and uh, so many things. I, guys led me and directed me sure and been there every step of the way yeah uh, but it, but anyway i and i i need to you know in, in the accomplishments anything i did military or personal life i, I know i just need to credit god for it right that uh, i stood underneath that to crit bridge you know that's the fact but how i got there it was mm -hmm. god All amen good. yeah uh, not me. And, and he did it just because he could. Yes. And he was, he was doing that because he loves you so much. He I talked about, me. I talked about the, well, yeah, right on it. And I talked about the bridge, you know, and, and all these huge engineering projects everywhere. But you know what the most exciting part was going with the head chaplain in Baghdad to an Iraqi church and ministering wow. To, to those uh, Christians in that <laughs> environment. That's, that's awesome. That's what I remember of Iraq, you know, but it wow. was God. Yeah. And I, I mean, I could just tell a story how, you know, how that happened, but, but I mean, God made it happen. And, right. and that's been my whole career. He's just been there. It's almost like being a national guard you know, and, and civil service, you know, two different careers going, well, God's there right beside you and everything yeah. you do, yeah. uh, making it possible and then, then using you for his purposes. Wow, Daryl, that's amazing. So let's summarize. We're, we're both uh, in our late 60s and we're facing our 70s. What kind of advice would you give to our classmates? That's the primary audience here. Yeah. Well, well classmates, I guess the big thing with me is that I have been sick for a decade now. Mm. And it started out with West Nile virus mm. and uh, that, that wrecked havoc on my immune system. It spun out of that into a really rare form of pneumonia that uh, spent 28 days in the hospital. Uh, I, uh, following that, I've, I've had immune system treatments for a year. I've had three relapses. Mm. And before I started this journey, I, I was so proud of my strength. I mean, I retired at 57. Mm. And I could outwork younger men, mm. hands down. Mm. And I, this hit me and it humbled me. Mm. And I, it's been quite a journey. I, you know, it's, it's such a blessing to have good health. And, but you know, the biggest realization is I've got God with me and I, I can tell you stories of 
how God's worked in my life in the hospital. Mm. It, it, in the hospital, it took me four, four days to come to grips with, you know, I wasn't here. It was not a mistake. I was there. And God yeah. had a purpose for me there. Yeah. My yeah. challenge to you, uh, classmates, and it's my challenge too. You all have done such marvelous things in your lives. You got kids, grandkids, you've done amazing things at work, served our country. And you know, what lives you all have lived. I mean, and most of you started out better than I did at West Point. I was, you know, not high up there. <laughs> and, but I want to tell you, don't cross the finish line without Christ. Amen. And if you don't, if you don't know him, and I used to I work for six years in youth ministry uh, to the uh, juvenile delinquents in lockup. <laughs> and I would tell them, you know, if you don't know the Lord, just seek him. And there's a promise in Jeremiah uh, chapter 29. If you seek me, you shall surely find me. If you right. seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, Lord. You don't have to cross the finish line alone. Hmm. So uh, my advice, accept the Lord and uh, cross that finish line with him. Amen. I'm going to close it there.